So, Jamie, I'm going to ask you something challenging, and it's really close to my heart because it's something that um, I myself have been, like, trying to, to figure out, navigate in my own work with young people. Um, and I just, I wanted to know kind of how you see the connection between addiction mm. and idolatry. Mm. And, you know, what do we, how do we begin mm. to think about it? What do we begin to do about it? Yeah, it's such a, a challenging question. I mean, uh, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but ironically, Augustine helps me to start to think about mm -hmm. this. So in, in, in book eight of his Confessions, he has this an account of how what starts out as a, what looks like my free choice to love something else starts to become a habit. And as that habit snowballs, all of a sudden it becomes a necessity. And now he says, I, I realize that I've just, I'm the one who put the chains on myself mm -hmm. because now I'm enslaved to this thing and I can't not chase it. Mm -hmm. So for, for him, idolatry it, it becomes this kind of addiction because now, uh, um, even while I might be telling myself I'm free, it turns out I'm not because all I can do now is chase this fix, you right. might say. And I guess the, the part that is so heartbreaking and scary for me is for someone who is now caught in that chain, right, for whom it's become this necessity, um, they might even intellectually know right. that it's not w going to work. Right. But that doesn't mean that their, their mm. habitual orientation right. doesn't keep propelling them that way. And, and I wonder, so how do you bear witness to what joy looks like? What, where's the hope for right. a better... A, better version of the good life. And and it seems to me that um, in some ways, I'm, I'm not sure that they are going to really be open to pursuing that other way of life until, sadly, they've been kind of cracked open by right. the failure of right. it not working. Um, so in in the meantime, I guess, as, and it's such a painful thing right. to watch, but, but the, the faithful witness is the one who just stays present right. and is alongside them you know compassion is suffering with right and so you're alongside them you you keep bearing witness to how they are made for something else right. um and then to be there when it implodes right, right? and and to uh without judgment right. and without well, actually with a uh, you know, incredible sense of sympathy because you see exactly how this works. Right. And and maybe we, we should all see these tendencies in ourselves. Right. And then to hopefully say, I, I know what you're hungering for. I know what you're looking for. And, and what we what we want to invite you into is a totally different story about who you are and whose you are. And, and what God holds out to you is the grace of a new will so that you can choose something mm -hmm. totally different. So and um, there are so many people around the country I know who are doing exactly that, who are right. present in all of the messy heartbreak of that. Sometimes it's it's not even, it's not youth workers, it's parents right. who have to, to live through that same thing and just trusting that God is always out ahead of us waiting. Right. Um, you know, Augustine organized his confessions around the parable of the prodigal son. The, the entire story is organized around the parable of the prodigal son. And, and the most powerful picture, I think, in that parable is that when the son is finally ready to return from his exile, the father's already waiting for him at the end mm -hmm. of the road and has been looking constantly. And that's, that's grace for Augustine. And we, we just want to be little icons of that kind of God, I think. Mm.